Hello, hello, it's Angel here. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, hello, hello. If you haven't been here before, hello, hello. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Um, this is the, um, yeah, my monthly wrap up, my monthly reflections, my monthly favourites, uh, things that have been feeding my soul and filling my cup. And I've got to say, when I started thinking about the things that I'd done in May, I didn't feel I'd done very much, to be honest. Actually, I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the video as well. And then when I started looking back through my journal, you know, gathering the bits and pieces that I was going to show you, I was like, hmm, no, well, actually, I have done actually more than I feel I had done. Does that make sense? Totally babbling. Let's have a bit of a chin wag. Grab yourself a cup of coffee if you'd like to. Um, maybe a cup of tea. <laughs> maybe a biscuit. <laughs> and uh, let's get this done. So let's start off with the decks that I used for Dawn Michelle's Fellowship of the Weavers practice. Um, it's a practice that I'm continuing with, hopefully, fingers crossed, for the whole of uh, 2024. Um, and those decks were the Oracle of Mystical Moments, Bodicea's Tarot of Earthly Delights, which is an indie or Kickstarter deck that I backed. And this is the Magic of You Oracle. So these two are mass market. This one is indie or Kickstarter. Um, and I'm going to just... Um, say that I was uh, really feeling drawn last month to ex explore my inner garden um, and that metaphor uh, and so I was f really feeling drawn without realising it but when I look back on it now I realise it um, I was really really feeling drawn to my like deck with lots of flowers flower flowery imagery in them oh my goodness me <laughs> I'm gonna get my teeth in I'm gonna put my brain in gear and hopefully this is gonna go a little bit smoother so, <laughs> I think I paired these two in a, in a different video. I can't remember what video that was. And I'm not going to try and, you know, research back to it. Um, and I was like, oh, these two are really, they pair really nicely together. And then this one, uh, Oracle of Mystical Moments, just came out of nowhere, basically. It just, you know, surprised me. And I was like, oh, yes, I need to get this out and use this one as well. So these three worked really nicely together. These two especially. Um, I tended to pull this one in as more of a clarification. But, but the messages were really fantastic that I got with them, I've, I've got to say. But basically pretty much as, as always. And, you know, I tend to that quite often about my decks. Which kind of makes sense, otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't be using them. If I was getting, a, you know, naff messages, I would kind of pop them away and pull out something else so you wouldn't you don't see those decks that you know I um I don't get very good messages on and I, I change out that makes sense I feel like I'm babbling um what was I going to say I was going to say that yo, yeah if, if you if you have seen my channel um for any length of time you'll know that I used this deck not so long ago and when I started using it I was like oh, I don't know if I like it I don't know if I want it in my collection I'm really unsure about it and I remember having a big hoo-ha about the borders. Um, and I used it for the month, whenever that was, a couple of months ago. And so I'm, I, and I got on really, really well with it. And I'm kind of a bit surprised that it's come out again so quickly. Because it wasn't my plan. My plan was to use the Shadowscapes Tarot this month for Dawn Michelle's Weaver practice. But this just was like, you know, it was like almost tapping on the shoulder. Like, hello, hello. Me, use me. You need to use me. I've got something to tell you. <laughs> so yeah, let's do two more. And then, like, as I mentioned, you'll see the, you know, when I when I thought think back to it, it's not so not such of a reach really that, you know, I was looking at, uh, what's the word? Um, I can't, I can't, I can't do any garden terms. But you know, I, I was getting rid of the old brambles and the dead shrubbery. And, you know, making the the soil um, ready for new seeds to be planted. So this is maybe not such a reach as I thought it was when I first, you know, got them out. I'm babbling. I'm going to stop. Anyway, these were amazing. I love them. Um, I've written them up in my journal that they were an excellent pairing. So those I'll forget because I'm an incomplete like that. And um, so, yeah, most impressed. Let's move on to the next decks. So speaking about my inner garden work, um, these are the decks I use for that practice or for that inquiry, I'm going to say, or that exploration. This is the Mother Tarot. Now I can't find that I forgot to show the backs of the other three decks. Nincompoopery. Oh, um, you've probably seen them before, hopefully. And this is the Season of the Witch Beltane, I want to say. Yes, I'm sure it is. And I'm going to, I grant you, I grant you, 
Um, art style wise, these two don't gel together particularly very well. Or maybe they do, I don't know. I, I didn't use them for that reason. I went with the messages. The messages worked so well on these two together. And um, I'm going to flip some cards and, and do a bit of a chat. But sometimes I'm such an nincompoop, honestly. Um, this synchronicity about my inner garden came up in April. And um, I was like, you know, full speed ahead in May. Yes, I'm going to, you know, explore this completely and delve into it and, you know, and see what's going on there. And of course... I should have learned by now, and I do know this, that the messages only come when they're ready to come through. Or, you know, I, you can't, I can't force anything that's, that's not ready to be heard, or I, I'm not ready to hear. Does that make sense? And so, you know, I was kind of, you know, all guns blazing in, in the beginning of May. I was like, yeah, I'm going to get this done and, you know, really delve into this and find out what's going on. And of course, I put too much pressure on myself. And, and then, of course, when which I'm going to explain a little bit later on the video as well, when, when other things start, you know, tapping on the shoulder or, you know, pointing or, you know, some other breadcrumbs turn up that I start following, then I feel bad that I'm not focusing on what I plan to focus on. Does that make sense? Which kind of doesn't make sense. You know, I'm babbling totally because I'm not particularly very strict with my practice. So I am very free and easy, which which is why I, you know, if the breadcrumbs go off into a different direction, then I start following that that direction. But somewhere deep down, I'm still thinking I shouldn't be feel like that. I shouldn't be following this. I should be, I should be, you know, focusing on this instead, which was my plan to focus on. But I think it's all part of the journey, isn't it? I think so. I do believe, you know, that although that you know the journey forked off here, I think I'm going to meet up with the same path again sooner or later. So I did do some exploration around the inner garden um, uh, messages that I got back in April with these two decks. And although the artwork is a bit, you know, maybe you wouldn't think they go together, they worked really nicely. And the messages, you know, they, the the decks really, you know, spoke to each other, worked worked well with each other. <sighs> Does it make sense? <laughs> I do wonder when I when I go back in editing, I'm thinking, what, what what was I trying to what point was I trying to make here? <laughs> but you know that's you know you know that that's what this channel is all about. Um, so yeah, and you'll you'll see again. Obviously, Beltane felt like a no brainer um, because we're in the month of May, um, and the Mother Tarot. I mean, you see this um, you know the, the flowery um, imagery that I was feeling really drawn to in May, and the, the colourful imagery that I was feeling drawn to. So yes, that was those. Um, what oh, I've got a couple of other decks actually to show you as well. And um, a practice that, well, something else that I delved into that totally, you know, shocked me or surprised me. Let's get into that. So my next practice was kind of loosely inspired by Dawn Michelle's Fellowship of the Weavers practice. Um, I've been eyeing this book on Amazon for quite a wee while. This is called Weirding Woods um, by Oliver McNeil, artwork by Nick Vooming, I'm going to say. This is the Story Master's Tales, and there are quite a few book in, books in this series. And this is almost like a role playing uh, book. I'm going to show you some um, illustrations here. Um, and um, there's different quests in this book as well. Um, and obviously, you know, you, you could use this to you, you use dice to to um, to complete these quests. And um, I've had my eye on it, as I mentioned, it's been in my Amazon cart for quite a few months, and I've been really I really wanted to purchase it and I was like, oh, I'm just going to bite the bullet. I'm going to do it. And um, and I did. And um, my plan was to use Tarot and Oracle as well as Dice to take me through these quests. And um, the quest that I completed or, yeah, well, almost have completed this, um, uh, this, um, uh, sorry, back in May was Night of the Blood Wolf, which, you know, felt really relevant with the all the dark woods work that I've been doing with my facets of self and my inner wolf and you know my shadow self and all that kind of thing um, and it was really really good fun actually now um, the good thing about this book which I didn't realize when I purchased it is there are these QR are they called QR codes I think they're called QR codes and um, and this gives you like a, um, a soundtrack and so once you're, whilst, whilst you're doing the quest um, you have this person reading the story to you and um and you've got this like background noise. So you, um, there was there was one um, there was one part where I was in a tavern, and you could hear you know glasses clinking and 
you know, the fire burning and, you know, low a mumble of customers and that kind of thing. And it really set the, it really set the mood, which I really, really enjoyed. So this was a book that I purchased in May and um, I, you know, started a new journal for it and all that malarkey. Um, and I obviously used some decks. So let's get into those. So no surprises, the Darkwood Tarot appeared in this video as well. <laughs> this monthly favourites video. So we've got the Darkwood Tarot and this is the um, Sacred Hags Oracle both mass market decks and then when I was like rooting through my um tarot shelf I came upon these which I'd purchased a long long time ago with Spring Woods and I was like yes and if you haven't seen these these are like dinky little cards like this with the beautiful illustration on the back and the messages are like this so yeah so I use these three together um and I kind of wanted this practice to be oh, what's the word I'm looking for I didn't want it to be like I mean obviously you know if there was, there was going to be some you know um important messages coming through obviously that's fine but I wanted to kind of have this as like a you know just a bit of a relaxing activity and a different way to use my tarot cards which um it was really fun actually it was really really fun and I did get some really good messages through it as well but that wasn't the point of um um purchasing the book basically um yeah, and I don't know if I mentioned before, the Sacred Hags Oracle gives me a very mm, feminine ancestral voice. I get that's what I get through um, when I when I pull this deck out. So um, yeah, don't know. Just I just felt really drawn to it. So that's that's these are, these are the decks I use in any case. And obviously the Darkwood Tarot, you know, is always spot on for me. Um, it does speak to my shadow self, the inner wolf. Um, and so the, you know, the, the, this book and this, this practice kind of felt like a bit of a, a little bit of a continuation of that facets of self in a wolf, dark wood um, work that I've been doing uh, recently the last couple of months. So yes. So anyway, so this is obviously something I'm going to be continuing with. And I just kind of, you know, I don't do a, qu a quest all in one day or one evening or one week. I just, you know, I, I, I pick it up when I want a bit of downtime and I want to do something different with my tarot um, cards, basically. So, yes, that was that. Love this. Anyway, so, yes. Um, yeah, other decks and practices I've been working with this month. Let's get into that. And let's get into something that, you know, totally sidelined me. And, you know, the, the, what I was talking about earlier with the breadcrumbs. And following the the this this forked path in a different direction, or possibly in the same direction that's going to meet up with the other path later on. Stop talking. Let's show some digs. So one evening when I came home late from work, um, but I think at the beginning of May, um, I was sitting here in my sacred space and I was just kind of you know with a cup of tea winding down. And then I started thinking about this deck, which doesn't usually sit in this bag, but it's been homed in this bag with its own crystal, which I don't tend to do. This is a, uh, a lab, oh, put that on the screen because my brain is not working. Um, yeah, and I started thinking about this deck and um, I decided to start edging it, which, you know, I had no plans of working with this deck this month or, you know, for the foreseeable future, to be honest. It wasn't on my radar. And um, I think this came about because of a reading or a couple of readings that I've been doing with the Magic of You Oracle. Let me grab that card and show you. So this is where this thought process had, had come from. Uh, this card, which the magic, the magic you seek is inside of you, let it flow. And I pulled this card several times. This was kind of a bit, a bit of a stalker card, so much so that I, at, in, at the end, put it on my altar because I thought it was really important or like a message that, you know, that needed to be adhered to. <laughs> Um, anyway, so this this kind of just, you know, came into my mind and I sat there that evening and um, edged it in a beautiful like dark brown colour, earthy brown colour. And then I decided to pull this one out, which is my one of my favourite oracles, uh, a compendium of witches, which is the mass market version. And um, I just, yeah, I kind of was thinking about that inner witch, um, which kind of got me into thinking about, you know, the facets of self work that I'm doing. And that this could possibly be another facet that was coming through to me that needs to be worked with. I mean, I've obviously been working a lot with my um, inner child, uh, recent, well, you know, the last couple of years. I've been working with my uh, shadow self, the inner wolf. 
And so I wondered if this was kind of another facet that was coming through, which I wanted to explore and really look into. So that's what I did with these two decks. Um, so I did quite a bit of work with um, my inner witch facet, I'm going to call it. Now, I did do a couple of readings with this deck when I first got it in. It was on pre-order. Um, but, but I was a bit like, yeah, no, this is not the right time. No, this is not the right time for me to be working with this deck. And so I popped it away and I didn't have any plans to work with it, to be honest. And then when it started calling to me, I was like, hmm. Now, I'm not sure a companion which is, they, they work together, but I'm not. I'm not sure this is the 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 pairing. This is definitely the deck I want to use for this practice, and I have been using for this practice. I'm not sure if this one is 100% the right fit. <sighs> I say that, and now I'm gonna now I've got a confession, and I went on to purchase the the witch oracle. Let me grab that. This one, which I haven't worked with yet. This one came um, end of last week, I think. Uh, this isn't Angie Sullins uh, deck. This was a Kickstarter, I believe, to begin with, and then it was a mass market. And um, let's grab some card to show you. It comes with a bag, just just FYI. And it comes with a chunky guidebook as well. Um, and I kind of uh, this was on my pre-order list when, I, when it first came out. I really wanted it, and then once I looked, saw it, um, uh, I did some obviously, you know, some Amazon review not amazon reviews what am i talking about youtube um what some youtube videos and then i was kind of like no i don't need that deck and i kind of um cancelled my pre-order and i don't know it, you know you know how this goes don't you you know how this goes there are certain decks that start calling and i was like i think i need to buy this deck so guess what that's what happened um and as mentioned i haven't worked with it as yet um but my plan is to continue with this work in which, what's the next month that follows eight, uh, May? <laughs> Honestly, my brain today. Um, uh, June, obviously. And there's my kitty cat, who's jumped up on one of my altars, who wants my attention, because he's a cheeky monkey. So it's going to be interesting to find out what, how this one works. If you've got this deck, let me know. I'd, I'd love to know, you know how it reads for you. Flip a few more cards to give you a bit more of an idea. But this one is so, so powerful. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the Compendium of Witches as well. And it might end up being that these three become like um, uh, a combination of decks I use. I'm not sure. It's definitely, um, this is definitely the one. I just need to find the perfect pairing. And I'm going to try not to purchase any more decks. <laughs> I can't promise, but I'm going to try. I'm really going to really, 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 really try thinking about it now and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna there's a bit of a continuation with this story in a wee second I'm wondering if the sacred hags oracle would work with this should we be a cheeky beaky and try it where's that gone where's it gone where's it gone, where's it gone? wait one second please hold I can't remember if I tried this pairing I've worked with so many decks this month I feel I don't know I just feel like I've been all over the show this month I haven't I haven't been able to what's the word ground my squirrel energy which um is something i'm going to be really concentrating on in june i feel really airy fairy i feel like i'm up i'm up somewhere and i need to be grounded i don't know it's all very bizarre um hence the reason i didn't feel like i had achieved very much um in may but when i look back in my journal i have actually achieved quite a lot um so uh, i'm going to speak about this in my um June Dex and Intentions video, but I'm 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 currently doing um, a mid-year reset, pairing back, and um, almost like the start of the year, looking at the intentions that I had for 2024, and um, reassessing, reevaluating. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. So watch out for that video. That's coming, you know, maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I'm, I'm not sure, but it's definitely coming. I'm kind of working with that process right this second. What do we think about these two? I'm kind of feeling it. I'm kind of feeling it. I'm not saying the art styles like really gel together. But this kind of feels a bit ancestral. And I'm going to say that because this led me on to <laughs> the next... Um, 
what can I say, exploration, I'm going to say. Um, I think I've mentioned before, I and mean, I'm sure everyone knows who follows my channel, I do have an ancestral practice. And I started researching my ancestr ancestral lineage, I'm going to say, back in, love this, uh, back in 2020, 2021, something like that. And I got myself onto Ancestry.com. Anyway, uh, with the research I've done on Ancestry.com, um, I found out that um, 26, 27 generations back, um, my great, 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 great times 26, 27 grandmother on my, on my uh, mother's side um, was Jaquetta of Luxembourg. Um, if you don't know who that is, um, uh, her daughter was Elizabeth Woodville and Elizabeth Woodville married um, the King Edward the Fourth back in the fourteen uh, fourteen hundred and something something. Um, yeah, and the whole point of this story was that starting to work with this inner facet of myself, this inner witch facet, kind of got me onto researching and looking more into Jaquetta of Luxembourg. And why would that be? Well, I shall let you know, and I shall bring in a book which will kind of explain and join the dots. Let's have a look. So a quick bit of a backstory. Uh, Jaquette of Luxembourg was born in 14, 14, 14, 16, something like that. And um, uh, yeah, just to really, you know, shorten the story, she had a daughter, Elizabeth Woodville. And now Elizabeth Woodville was married and she had two sons and her husband died in a battle. He was a knight. He died in a battle. And um, she had two children already. Um, and, but still went on to marry the King of England, King Edward IV. And um, this was a big hoo-ha uh, because, um, you know, it was unknown for, or not very usual for a King of England to marry somebody who was divorced, or not divorced, sorry, who was a widowed and who already had children. And so it came about uh, through a like a political uh, power struggle almost that um, Jaquetta and her daughter uh, Elizabeth Woodville were accused of witchcraft. We got there in the end, party people. We got there in the end. So I've I've known that story for quite a while, and I purchased this book, um, which is all about um, witchcraft in the fifteenth century, which has all information. You know, um, the whole um, timeline. Um, of Jaquetta and her daughter Elizabeth Woodville, and it is very, it is very, very political. You know how it was back in, back in, back in the old days. Um, you know this this power struggle going on. Um, now Jaquetta was, you know, um, what's the word? Uh, she was accused of witchcraft, as was Elizabeth Woodville. However, um, those charges were dropped. Um, but but this kind of I don't know, this kind of started nagging in my brain about this inner witch facet and um, this, you know, um, ancestral, sorry, unexpected pause for my kitty cat. Um, I can't remember what I was saying, but my, my point was, was that I, I dove into this book head first um, yeah, and I had a good old read of this one, and it was really, really interesting. And I kind of um, pulled this into um, the work that I'm doing with this inner facet, this inner witch facet. And, um, yeah, I don't know if I want to really go much more into that. However, I'm going to say... Sorry, second unexpected pause. Um, that led to this deck coming out to play. Now, I wanted a deck... I, I don't want to go so much into what I'm doing with this. I'm just going to say that I, you know, I read this book, loved it, wanted to do some more work in conjunction with this and felt that I needed this deck to help me with that. Now, I'm also going to say that I first initially thought of the Deviant Moon Tarot because that has got a bit of a medieval vibe to it. And um, I think I mentioned this in an Instagram post that I did that I uh, I asked that deck. I haven't used that deck in about two years, two and a half years, something like that. Deviant Moon now I'm talking about. And um, Chuff gave it a good old shuffle, you know, pulled, um, sorry, asked the question um, how this deck could help me with 
this work I'm doing here at the moment. Obviously, I was a bit more specific. And um, it threw out the Tower card and the Five of Wands. And I was like, hmm. Well, obviously, you can't help me, uh, Deviant Moon Tarot. Never mind. I shall scuttle along on my way. <laughs> um, and then this tarot deck kind of... Um, I kind of thought about this tarot deck. So it's, it's got a bit of a... Uh, an olden day vibe, I'm going to say. Now, I don't have many of these kind of decks because this isn't my... I wouldn't say this is my aesthetic, particularly. This is the Hoods Tarot, as mentioned. This was a second-hand a deck I, I purchased second-hand. Originally saw it on Dawn Michelle's channel. It's out of print, unfortunately. <clears throat> and I was really, really, really lucky to get my hands on it. I think it was about eight pounds. I'm sure it was under 15 in any case. I'm sure it was eight pounds. Um, it, was, it was unbelievable. And it is a, a real a real deck. It's not a, it's not a fake. Look, it's got a barcode and everything. It's a, an old US Games. Well, actually, I don't know if it's that old. Anyhow, I'll put the name, the, 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 the date on the screen. Irrelevant. Stop babbling. Um, so yeah, I started using this one and then you know how it goes, don't you? Um, and what I'm going to say, actually, I asked the same question of this deck. Um, how could this deck help me with this work I want to do? And this was the card that came out and I was like, well, this sounds a lot more promising. Um, but since I've been doing this, this work that I'm doing, which I haven't gone into, which I'm not going to go into in this video, um, the tower card has come up a lot so I don't know if that's a good thing or not maybe the deviant moon was onto something I don't know we'll have to see we'll have to see how this pans out um yeah anyway so um uh, with that being said oh, there was two deck purchases in May there was actually more but I'm not going to go into that in this in this uh, <laughs> video either let's grab those decks Oh, sorry, I want the camera. Oopsie. Okay, so, yeah, these were the decks I purchased oh, in May. Uh, this is by Ina Seagull, I'm going to say the name is. Mystical Healing Reading Cards. And we've got the Golden Tarot by Cat Black. Both are mass market decks. Doesn't make it right, but, you know, I'm just, just saying, just FYI. Uh, these are the backs of the Golden Tarot. I'm sure you've seen this. They're edged in gold. Haven't started working with these ones yet because I didn't get them in. Um, I got them in a couple of days ago. Um, and I feel these two are going to work nicely together. The question is, is it going to tap me into what I need, want it for or need it for? Don't know. Um, let me show you some cards. And I'm thinking that I'm going to bring in uh, Hood's Tarot as well, possibly. So I don't know. I'm going to, I mentioned about the whole, you know, June reset. And I'm also doing a, an update on my, <laughs> I'm, I don't even say the words because it's so embarrassing. Low, low, buy year. Um, I'm just to, you know, I'm, there's some new rules coming in for my low, low, buy year in June. And, you know, in the forthcoming months, which I'll talk about in that video. Um, because I feel I've kind of gotten a bit out of control. <laughs> I need to rein myself back in again. <laughs> but I'll talk about more about that in my uh, in my monthly uh, no, sorry, in my low low buy year update. Anyway, so I'm I'm feeling that these two are looking very very promising. I, I'm interested to know how this one's going to read for me because I don't tend to go with this kind of um, art style. I'm also going to say with this work that I've already been doing, um, the number three kept coming up over and over again. And I even um, um, mentioned it in my journal. I was like, oh, um, I got the card three, then I got another uh, three, and then I got another three, then I got a 33. And I was like, what a coincidence. All these, you know, threes keep appearing. And then I, I read a passage in this book, um, and it specifically says that there's a, a specific entry in this uh, book that mentions about uh, 33 coins being I think it was 33 or was it 333 I can't remember I wrote it in my journal um, uh, being withdrawn to pay uh, a debt which was just so interesting I was like there's no there's some more threes coming up so 
so whenever I see a three now, whenever a three comes up in these readings, you know, within this practice I'm working on, feels very relevant. It feels like a like a bit of a nudge. So yeah, we're going to see how these two pan out, and I think that the Hoods Tarot might even come in with this pairing. So it might be a, a threesome. I don't like that. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> Uh, I'm, to I'm totally not against working with two tarot decks. I, I do do that quite often with an oracle. Oi, hello, what's going on there? I think there's some real potential here. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Ooh, I mean, I'm very intrigued. I love this um, this map, an old book. Um, can I say collage or, you know, mixed media work going on in the background? Yeah, one more, one more. Oopsie, oh, I'm dropping cards. Sorry, party people. Okay, um, I think we're going to move along because <laughs> I need some more space on my desk. And just to go back to this book one last time, um, reading about Chiquetta of Luxembourg, um, I read that... Um, uh, there was a book that really caught my eye that Jaquetta had um, read when, when she was a, a younger girl, uh, and that was called the Book of City, the a book the Book of the City of Ladies, which is by Christine de Pizan. I'm going to say the name is, and so this is a book that I purchased also last month, which I've I've started reading. I haven't gotten particularly very far at the minute, which is also in conjunction with this other practice that's going on. But I felt this was kind of relevant, um, and I feel it's kind of, kind of something that you know I need to get into um this is about oh, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna let you read this to be honest so pause to read I think this is going to be a really interesting book and I felt really drawn to read it I feel this this tug to read it so I feel that there's going to be some something that I need to I don't know, a message that I need to gain from this text? I don't know. I don't know. I just go where the breadcrumbs lead me. So this kind of, you know, um, this kind of goes along with what I mentioned before, that, you know, I was totally planning on looking at my inner garden this month. And then when this kind of um, took me off in a different direction, I was like, but what? I kind of was like looking over my shoulder thinking, but wait, what about my inner garden? Hold on, where are we going now? Um... So I kind of need to just, and I got this message as well, uh, you know, I just need to kind of go with the flow. I do need to go with the flow. I just need to go where the breadcrumbs take me um, and not, you know, not question too much. Because I find that when I, you know, when I question too much, I don't get the answers. It's when I, you know, let myself just, you know, when I just surrender, that's when the message, that's when the answers come, I feel. Does that make any sense? I don't know. I don't know. It totally makes sense in my brain. Um, another book that came into my collection this month, that would be this one, Tarot Spells by Janina Renee, I'm going to say. So, yes, that's that one. Um, secondhand Finds. Should we take a look at that? I think we should. Let's do that. So my secondhand finds this month, my thrifted, thrifted, thrifted treasures. I did try to cut back. Um, I did purchase this, which um, is a, a ship. And this is for my, I want to cr create a little shrine or a little area on my ancestral altar for Jaquetta. And Jaquetta um, had a major voyage. Um, yeah, so this kind of, I just wanted a, um, a ship, an old fashioned galleon. No, not a galleon. I don't know what the word is. Um, I don't do ships. <laughs> I don't do boats. <laughs> um, but this this kind of felt relevant. So I want to create a little shrine to, as mentioned, to um, to Jaquetta. And um, that book that, that I showed you previously is also now currently sitting on my ancestral altar. So this I purchased for a couple of pounds. Um, yeah, back in uh, the middle of May, once this, this kind of practice, I started started reading and delving into this practice. Um, from my super duper secondhand online shop that I'm a massive fan of, which I have to stop looking at, honestly, I purchased this beauty, which is a piece of jasper. 
what did I pay for this one? I think it was nine pounds. I can't remember. It was eight or nine pounds. Love it. It's gorgeous. It fits in my hand beautifully. Um, spoiler alert, Jasper is a stone I'm going to be working with in June. I really want to ground my energy because my squirrel brain has been, ooh, honestly, as I mentioned, I'm feeling really untethered. Can I say that? I don't know. Mm, I don't know what it is, but I need a, re I need a reset. And I felt that way back in January. Mm, yeah, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go more into that in June. I feel like I'm not making any sense. Pretty much as usual, to be quite frank. Um, same secondhand shop online. Um, I have mentioned they don't just sell crystals. They sell all different kinds of things. Um, but, you know, I do tend to go to their stone section, <laughs> what it's called. Um, and this was a piece of rose quartz. I think... I think this was under ten pounds. I think I purchased this one for, and I don't. I don't think I need any more rose quartz now because you know, if you've seen my previous video, you'll know that I did purchase quite a bit of rose quartz. So, I'm. I think I'm. I say now. I think I'm happy with my rose quartz um, crystal collection. Uh, other things that I purchased. Oh, I purchased this. Let me show you. Okay, so this was a, a second hand book I purchased. This is called the Disappearing Sunday or the Disappear the. The Sunday's Disappearance, I think it's called. Um, this is a children's book. It's like based on a um, folk, based on folklore. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures here. It's more like a, um, um, a retelling. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to give you a bit of a, an insight into what the book is about in a wee second. But I loved, 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 loved the, um, the subject matter, which I'm going to um, give you a bit of an insight into in just a wee second when I read it. Okay, so this says, uh, basically, Nina lives in a, uh, a dirty town um, and is visited by the week's six angry wolves. So you'll see that kind of, that kind of like enticed me because I've been doing my inner wolf work. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Every day um, she has her work that she, that she never, ever finishes. She never gets it done because there's just so much to be done. Um, and there's a tale that there is a seventh wolf, a seventh kind wolf, um, but unfortunately a very evil witch has stolen it and is holding it um, captive. Now the seventh wolf, the seventh kind wolf is called Sunday. So Nina, she's had enough and she decides to take herself on a dangerous adventure to the forgotten land to free Sunday. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know. It just really, it really, it really appealed to me. And um, I was doing um, the, the uh, what's it called? The Loose Fairy Tale Folklore um, uh, theme uh, for the last couple of months. And I don't know. I just love the, I love the, uh, I love the illustration style. And I love it that it was all about, you know, the, the wolves, these angry wolves and this kind wolf which is the inner wolf, wolf work I've been doing. So yes, that really, you know, enticed me, intrigued me. That was purchased from eBay. I bought this little beauty. I know, I shouldn't have done. I don't need toys. Or, well, maybe I do. You know, my inner child loves this. This little witchy, witchy, witchy girl. She's got beautiful coloured hair. Love. She was bought for a couple of pounds um, on, I think on eBay. can't remember. And then I also purchased a new altar cloth, which is... I think I'm going to replace this on my uh, Jaquetta shrine. Not sure. Um, it's very beautiful. It's like crushed velvet, which is not doesn't tend to be my kind of thing. But this, I don't know. I don't know. I just felt called to it. So I think that was a couple of pounds as well. So yes, those are my thrifted finds. Let's do that. Um, what else do I have to tell you? Oh, oh, I messy May. Yes, of course I did messy May. Didn't do all of the um, prompts, but I did some of them. Let me grab my um, my super duper facets of self book and I will possibly show you a couple of um, bits and pieces that I did there. So this is my facets of self, <laughs> facets of self journal, which you might have seen. Um, I did this with cotton wool and um, acrylic paint. Uh, added a wolf on here and um, covered the back. Um, this is an ongoing, obviously ongoing, you know, uh, journal as well. I'm not going to show you so much of the journal, but I am going to show you a couple of the pages that I did. This one isn't finished yet, but this was my enchanted page. 
um, I painted this with acrylics just on a piece of you know bog standard or not bog standard some kind of you know super duper artsy craftsy paper <laughs> you know I can, you, you can see I know my technical terms and I just cut out some letters from um, some old magazines I had and I've you know connected this on with some tape I still need to do the legs and the, the boots and it's quite, this felt quite you know quite relevant to this page which is obviously the original uh, illustration in this book which I really love this this is like obviously you know uh, a facet of self my, one of my facets of self the red bonnet and obviously you know um well not obviously but I've covered the text in the book and um uh I had I put just another second hand book from the charity shop and cut out the picture of the wolves in it uh, which was it was all about wolves basically and um yeah and so I'm gonna obviously you know it's, there's some room for some journaling and things like that and there's obviously some room for journaling on the back of this one uh let me see what else I can show you so that was one of the prompts which is enchanted uh this was another one which you know totally related to my inner garden hence we've got you know the red bonnet with the guard or the garden of the forest picking the flowers uh this was nourish uh this was also done with acrylic paint and I don't know if you can see this cracked this is supposed to represent like the cracked earth that hasn't been nourished in a while. Um, bees, which I forgot to mention, were really a real synchronicity last month. Um, and I got lots of synchronicities with bees. And I even found, unfortunately, a dead bee, which is now sitting on my altar, actually. Yeah, enough said. Um, so, yeah, nourish was that. That was nourish. Um, and I also put, popped some uh, old uh, colouring book paper on the back of this one. Um, this one was blooming, uh, and even this one was blooming. Um, these are the pictures of the wolf again that I got from the book that I had um, dismantled. Um, and I think we're going to stop. I think we're going to stop there. Um, there are some other ones, but I've obviously got some other writing and some some other bits and pieces which I don't want to be. I don't want them to be seen. Um, <laughs> um, so yes, so that was messy May. I also joined Ivor the Occultist's membership. Um, I think it was about £3.50, something like that. And um, that allows me to join Ivy's um, uh, channel membership and um, be part of their book club. And I'm going to show you the book. Uh, one second. Good. This is a book that I really want to read. Um, spoiler alert for June. This was a book I should have read this month. And when I saw Ivy the Occultist was, was reading this in their book club, I was like, oh, yes, I'm going to join. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see what other perks I get with um, Ivy the Occultist's um, membership channel. Or membership, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yes, that was a bit of a spoiler for June, for my June intentions and um, Dex video that's coming. Uh, anything else that I've got to tell you? Um, I don't think so. I think that was it, to be honest. Oh, obviously another deck that I used every day pretty much was this one. You know what this one is, right? This is the... Well, you might know. What do I know? Uh, what's it called? <laughs> Wondrous Tarot, obviously. Uh, this is a deck that I have been pulling daily. And it's also a deck... Oh, I've, never got that... I've never gotten that card previously before. That was interesting. I've never seen that one. <laughs> or probably have seen it, but haven't uh, got a rec recollection of it. Um, you see, right? Do you see where my squirrel brain is? It's, it's like it's here, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's everywhere. Um, and this deck helps me with my squirrel brain when I'm unsure what to do in my practice. Um, you know, I, I, uh, this deck helps me to kind of ground the energy, to ground my squirrel brain and to focus my energy to where it needs to be in my, my practice on any given day. <sighs> so, yeah, this is another deck I'm going to be uh, continuing to work with, basically. So it's probably going to pop up in next month's video as well. So that's that one. Um... Yeah, I think we're pretty much done and dusted. Yeah, I think we are. Let me know what you've been working with in the month of May. Uh, don't be shy now. Drop me a comment in the comment section. It's always lovely to catch up with you. Um, and otherwise, I'm going to thank you for, you know, coming along on this very squirrel brain journey today. Apologies. Uh, as mentioned, my energy is everywhere. Hopefully it'll be much more focused in June. Let's um, keep our fingers and toes crossed. Have a lovely morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. Take care and I really hope to see you in the next video. Toodaloo!